Repeat Pattern Design. In this demo, I am going to demonstrate how you can use a Freeware Sumo Paint to create seamless tile images that are uploaded to Spoonflower to be printed as textiles. I have uploaded the image here from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and I'm deleting all the text that came with the image. I'm going to now adjust the fish and the edges of this image so that there's a seamless repeat pattern when I upload it. Any image you're going to use, uh, whether it's a photograph or an illustration that you're starting with, keep in mind that um, the printer really wants images that are 150 dpi at 100%. So let's say I want my repeat tile to be 5 inches by 5 inches, it's going to have to be 5 inches by 5 inches at 150 dpi. Right here I am adjusting um, my deep sea fish and trying to get them in a little bit more of a dynamic um, pattern other than just stacked atop each other as they were when the image was opened um, after I pulled it down from the web. I'm going to crop the image a little bit so I don't have as much uh, white space. And then I'm going to add color using the paint tool, the brush tool, making sh and make sure that I'm using the darken mode. And then on my right hand side I'm selecting the color. When I use the brush in this mode of darken only, the white areas that I cover will acquire that color whereas the black areas will remain the same. So this is a really nice quick way to color a black and white image or photo. So again you want to have the brush tool selected, you want to be in darken only mode, and you want to select colors. Um, later on in the workshop um, I will go into color palettes but you can use either CMYK or RGB um, for the time being. And the final file that we will upload to Spoonflower will be a JPEG file. When I go into Filters and go into Other under Offset, I can adjust really where the middle of my image is. I can push the seams of my image to the middle of my image. It's as if the edge of the paper um, becomes the middle of the paper. It's like rolling your drawing around a cylinder and spinning it, slowly rotating it and choosing what will be the center of the image. This is a great way to adjust um, your image so that you can make sure the repeat tile is seamless because now you can see the white areas at once were the edges of your drawing in the middle and you can add components to it so that there's a seamless, there's no hard edges to your tile. So now I'm going to add another fish here. I'm going to start changing this tile so that I'm filling in all these white areas that used to be the hard sharp edges of the white illust illustration. I'm going to change the hue of this little fish and there's a hue slider just as there is in Photoshop. Sumo Paint is a great freeware that has many of the tools that Photoshop does. I'm going to add a few more elements here before I upload it as a JPEG to Spoonflower. I need to be sure that I don't have layers, I just have one layer in my image, so here I'm flattening this piece. When I had copied that little green fish, it had created a separate layer. Uh, so we needed to flatten that fish back onto the other layer. Now I'm going to create some ovals that I'm going to add um, to this textile, what will eventually be a textile pattern. I'm going to use a little bit of a brighter hue. And here I'm selecting the color. And adding just a few of these ovals throughout. 
I'm going to just add a few other changes to this image before I upload it to Screenflower. I'm going to use the posterize effect and reduce the amount of colors here just to show you a different way to work with photos or black and white images once you've colorized them. So after I have the changes that I want, um, well here I'm just playing with hue, again the hue slider made the image more orange. I'm going to save it as a JPEG, um, name it how I want to name it, and save it in the correct folder so um, I will know where to retrieve it from. And then um, I am done with Sumo Paint. I can say goodbye to Sumo Paint and open up Screenflower. And here I already have the account. I'm going to upload an image to my library find my new design, my new JPEG image, and I upload it. And it just takes a little while to upload um, the files. So here you can see the repeat design. You can look at it um, as a basic repeat or a single image. So just basic repeat, uh, half drop. And you can also do mirror repeat. Well, since ours is a seamless tile, the basic repeat is the best way to um, have it print. And you can do a swatch. You can view what it's going to look like and multiple yardages, uh, as well as the price for each yardage. Uh, at the top right column, you can see whether you want to get printing and quilting weight, cotton, um, lawn cotton, um, and they even now have silk, which is a very recent addition to their uh, fabrics that they can print on. Um, under details, you can add information or description of your textile, tags, and you can even post it for sale so other people can buy your textile design and buy fabrics printed with your designs. Um, to do this, though, you first must, must order a swatch, and the swatches are $5. Once you receive your swatch, then you can post your design for uh, sale. And here is uh, my collection of designs. You can select on each image. Again, play with how you want to have it repeat. And basic repeat is usually what I do. You can view the different yardages. And this is a very long yardage here. And um, you can just start creating a library of your different designs. You can follow other people's design libraries on Screenflower, as well as go to their Flickr blog. They have a Flickr group um, that is a great resource for specific imaging questions. And that is it for this lesson.